This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. You won't find that salesy stuff here. You'll find that working mixed with beer. You can't stop in just to say hi. We'll kick you out if you're that guy. We are IT in the D. Ooh, this is IT in the D. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is Max Ma- Ma- Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <laughs> this is the IT in the D Show. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and is part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck, Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. Oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland, Secret Lives of the American Teenager, and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh, yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. It's the IT in the D show. Gus, where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! I'm f- Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. Bear me. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Oh, what the hell with this? I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the D show. Hi, this is Ralph Macho, and you're listening to IT in the D show. Wax on. You know what. Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the deep off. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining? Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! 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 What is a nerd? I'm a geek, not a nerd. This is Scott Steiner, Big Pump and Pump. IT and the Geek Show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Yeah, You're in your like, underwear? I'm in my underwear. Here, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. I was banging oh, on the yeah. wang. Skeptical, skeptical Dave is skeptical. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to. Well, especially with the back doors open. It's just too big. It's way too big. We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. This is Robert Hayes, Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at my gumbo bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat stick. Turn your microphone off. Just get out. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And you're listening to the IT and the D show. Tough guy! Oh! So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do, the question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, had you better buckle up? Now ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go! As always, thank you for listening. It's August 24th. This is episode 106. Welcome to the IT in the D show. We are hanging out in the Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming in uh, beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. And we are proud to be part of the Podcast Detroit Network. This is 
Bob, the sales guy, always here with Dave, the geek. Nuri, the FNG, is on assignment in India. A quote-unquote business trip. My ass. <laughs> we, have a, we have an awesome show lineup. We got a couple great guests. Um, we have the CEO of Visby. We have Natalia live here in person. Thank I you wasn't going to try her last name either. So I didn't. I didn't want to go there. I didn't even ask. <laughs> yes, the long Ukrainian last name. Blame Ellis Island. That's what I say. Fine. <laughs> and then we have Alexis here, who is a rock star recruiter from Tech Systems, which is going to be coming handy because we have our Pink Slip Party coming up. If you don't know, it's September 17th. It'll be our 18th 19th. Pink Slip Party. We did 18. Yeah. That's what I've been telling her. That's why I got it in my head. <laughs> so it'll be our 19th Pink Slip Party. But if you are not familiar with it, it's a job fair without the suck. Um, it's basically an open mingle format with a beer in your hand, no suits, no resumes. Probably 100 to 125 hiring managers, recruiters going to be on staff. And uh, we expect a uh, good crowd. Oh, yeah, it's at the Majestic. I mean, so, you know, for those who have been to our smaller events, you know, we, we used to do, I mean, our very first pink slip party that we did was in the back room of Blackfin, and we destroyed it. We, like, blew out the entire bar. Breaking uh, news on Channel 4, lying yeah. on the building. Yeah, so we had, like, 350-odd people show up, and if you've ever been to the Blackfin, their capacity is 306. That's a problem. Uh, so we kept moving from venue to venue, and then finally we took over St. Andrew's Hall, and we got big enough there that they wanted us to split and take over the shelter downstairs, too. And we were like, yeah, we're not splitting the crowd. And off we went to the Majestic. So, yeah. We're going to have DJ Nuri in the house, who, did, who killed it last time with the uh, with a kind of a, I don't know what the hell you call it, what he played. Kind of chill house, whatever. Yeah. And then uh, we have a special guest. to uh, Come on over and watch Netflix and chill house. Do we announce yeah. uh, our special guest, or are we going to make that a surprise? Oh, let's make it a surprise. All it's right. we got fun. a special guest showing up. In the, in the wee hours of the evening. So hopefully you can make it out, um, even if you are not looking for a job and just just yeah. come out to network. And that's the point. I mean, we always tell people this. You know, don't freak out and think, oh, my God, if I go in and run into my boss, maybe he's going to think I'm looking for a job. No. Our events are always about networking. You know, the, the fact that you might be able to talk to 100 and some odd recruiters that night, purely coincidental. I got an awful uh, – <laughs> no, I got an awful note today, and it was like, nice to meet you guys at Hopcat, you know. Um, won't see you till December because I got a contract. It's like, you don't – come on. Come, haven't you been reading? Yeah, no, clearly, no, ever. I mean, our whole thing is don't come networking when you need something. The whole This should be a lifestyle. This should be a regular thing. Even if you don't like us, I go like somewhere else. I lifestyle that makes us sound like <laughs> First, I said, this is my partner, Dave. Welcome to our lifestyle. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just Podcast real quick. out of Ferndale. Yeah, yeah, right. We are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Wow. Well, hard of. This is getting worse and worse by the moment. And if you are, um, if you got nothing, <laughs> August 26th, this, this Wednesday, if you have nothing going on, we're going to be at at the Bird and the Bread in Birmingham, Michigan. Um, we're going to be doing a one of our rare... It's, that's an awful lot of bees. It is. Beer and the Bird and the Bread and the... And the Bird and the Bread and um, the Birmingham. It sounds like a Cosby and the Bird and the Bread and the Birmingham. <laughs> We've teamed up with the uh, Detroit <laughs> Chamber. We're going to be doing... They wanted to... I wanted to... We're, we're the, it's a ten, networks, a 10 Commandments of Networking. Yeah. It's not networking like a pro. No. Um, it's the, Apparently, it's the, they're, they're afraid our name. I'm sorry. If they're worried about our na- the name of our presentation offending people, they clearly haven't heard us give the presentation yeah, Just wait until they see it. <laughs> um, but August 26th, it's at, from 4 to 6 in downtown Birmingham. If you're around, come check us out. Um, we haven't spoke live in a while. Yeah, it's um, been a little bit. Yeah, so the, it should be fun. We get to fire up the PowerPoint, which is something I love doing because yeah. it's so much awesome. It's what we live um, for. <laughs> exactly. But hey. But, this, and we did have our event last week in Hopcat, which I did like go Hop- really, really well. I, mean, I like you know, Hopcat. We were upstairs in the Huma, and you can't. It's, it, it's not a Tuma room. Um, had a great time, really great turnout. Uh, you know, thanks again to Sola uh, for bringing the Social Media Association of Michigan folks out. It was a great, great mixed crowd of, of just folks that were, you know, in social media, just our regular IT crowd, folks that were looking, looking to hire, folks that had just heard about us for the first time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's a good time. That is a perfect venue. It's it's big enough yet small enough yet. The food is good. The beer is good. Yeah, it was big enough that there was somebody else having an event there that we didn't even know about <laughs> that it didn't matter. Yeah, the EMC guys were there. Yeah. Like, hey, want to join us? They're like, nah, 
I'm like, you guys suck anyway. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What are you going to do? Go back and listen to all the times we've talked smack about EMC. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but hey, just real quick, this uh, this episode of the IT and the D show is brought to you by Braintree. You've heard us rambling about them for a few weeks, but it really is probably the best way to implement uh, online payments for your mobile app. So if you're a mobile app developer, if you're looking to get something out, um, check out Braintree. You don't got to go to an external third party to, to process payments. You can just put in a little snippet of code probably take you less than 10 minutes inside your app and and basically take anything from uh from paypal venmo bitcoin a mastercard visa amex all your major credit cards um in a, in a real simple easy to administer uh format well and and the nice part of it is is i mean it is i mean it's a real simple easy form-based system so you drop that you know it, it okay well what's your merchant account Oh, you don't have one? Let's walk you through getting one. Uh, you know, you, which ones do you want to accept? Let's walk through, you know, making sure those are set up and, and those gateways are connected properly. It's, it's really, really clean and cool. Uh, and, and it is. It's, I believe it's uh, V.0. Yeah. So it's, you know, V.0 of their SDK. Uh, and it's just a couple lines of code. You drop it in. It's plug and play. Um, if you do have a problem with it, they've got folks standing by all the time uh, to answer your questions or even just go ahead and do it for you. Uh, and so, I mean, and it's, it's, a pay- it's, cool. it's a PayPal company, so it's not some flyby night or overseas right you can trust them um, because obviously um you know when you're taking payments you want to be able to trust the people that are handling your merchant stuff well no and and the best part is is so i mean you know they do have a a nice little offer running now where you know basically if if you go to their site and you hit braintreepayments.com slash it uh you can sign up with them play around check it out and your first fifty thousand dollars in payment transactions are absolutely free so you know you don't have to worry about well what's the percentage rate that i'm going to lose and i got to factor that in and i got that nah First fifty grand free. Go play. Go have fun. Speaking of not worries, whatever you're developing into um, supports you know .NET, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, uh, Android, iOS, JavaScript. So it does not matter what you're developing, and they they have a solution for you. So we appreciate it. BraintreePayments.com slash it get your fir- first fifty thousand dollars in payments for free. Yeah, check them out and uh, check them out. So where? So, <laughs> where, speaking of, I got my, 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 my dream has come true. Speaking of, of uh, mobile apps. Uh, I figured we were going to go here. So, no, no, no. There's probably three or four of those in this no, week. No, I know exactly where you're going. Uber? Yeah, of course it is. So, let's, I, you know. This is last year the Godfather rants started. And, and I, I, I wish I need to start keeping those old ones queued up just to keep them handy. <laughs> um, where Bob would like to isolate himself even further uh, from humanity as much as humanly possible. You know, so we're working on self driving cars and we're working on you know drone delivery services and all that stuff so why can't you know i call the pizza place and the pizza place send the drone with the pizza to knock on my door and possibly even open my door and just drop the pizza on the table i swipe my card on the drone and the drone goes away and i don't have to ever see anybody like i don't have to deal with the guy at the door like i don't uh and so news came out today uh that you know you if you are a video game uh, enthusiast and an isolationist like Bob is, uh, this is perfect news for you. No, I, I, I like see the, the, the I like people. Um, sometimes no, I don't no, like you, you like persons. I don't like you dumb don't like people. people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Uber will drop off your brand new copy of Madden 16, so I don't have to go to GameStop at midnight and talk to everyone about how I just beat Witcher and I just beat Far Cry and talk about the new. Um, the what, new games coming out, I can just have it come to my door. Um, yeah, when I want it. And as, yeah, as long as there's a driver available, you push the button, and they've partnered up with Microsoft. It's it's I believe it's only for Xbox. How much extra to bring me some Funyuns and a, like a, a vitamin <laughs> water? No, I'm serious. If you get yeah, like a case of Funyuns and like a case of vitamin water, and I'll tip you an extra for like I'm sure you can message the driver with that. Because <laughs> especially you, like there's okay, there's the Meyer gas station right on the corner, yeah. like less than fifty feet from my door. If you stop there and buy every bag of Funyuns and everything of like energy vitamin water, I will give you cost plus twenty bucks. Well, that's, do it. that's the bad thing because I live right next to there's a there's a GameStop in between the Five Guys and the Panera. So of course I go to get coffee in the morning, ah, let's see what games are out. I go get lunch, ah, let's see what games are out. And one this twelve pizzas are too. I know. Ah, let's see what games are out. And I'm like, crap, I just bought like three of them. <laughs> My life is ruined for the next four months until I beat them and then I never play them again. But Uber is making me happy. Um, I cannot wait until they can bring me like milkshakes and other things. Um, because yeah, I don't. Sometimes I don't want to leave. It's not that I'm an isolationist. I sometimes I just want things brought to me. Couch. I'm wearing Comfy. a t-shirt and a blanket. I don't want to. <laughs> 
I don't want to change that. I don't want to bend over and put on socks. Just <laughs> bring me my stuff. <laughs> it's true. Every- <laughs> so Uber's making you happy, uh, but who is... Uh, yeah, actually, you know what we didn't mention? We should. So you can find us out at uh, itinthed.com. Oh, my God. I forgot to say that. Yep. You can find us at uh, facebook.com slash itinthed. You can find us out... And actually, I just realized... Let's activate the other encoder as well, just for giggles. Uh, so you can find us at itnd.com, at facebook.com, slash itnd. You can find us on Twitter, at itnd. Um, if you're feeling particularly rambunctious at some point in time over the course of the evening, uh, our phone line is open. Uh, it works. Uh, that number is 248-579-5295. So, We're yeah. not taking call-ins. Eh, you never know. We might. What's wrong with you? Eh, who knows? Uh, so anyway, uh, but what is not making people happy uh, is apparently fear the Walking Dead. You know, it it was much anticipated. You know, The Walking Dead is all the rage. It is everywhere. I'm obsessed with it. I freely admit it. Uh, and so Fear the Walking Dead is the, uh, the prequel that is set in the world while, you know, Rick Grimes, the character that got, you know, he was the main guy. He's the main guy and he gets shot and he's in a coma and that's the first episode of The Walking Dead. It, Dave, it was it's, bad. It's what I didn't think it was bad. It was it was bad. It's trying to dude, it's the first episode of any freaking show out there. It's yeah, just you're trying to develop characters. Yeah. Okay. If they if they went on the premise of we're going to develop characters because so many people will watch it anyway just cuz it's walking dead, that's fine. But if it was standalone, it sucked. Like I tried to treat it as a different show and, and, and like I, I found myself fast forwarding cuz it was that bad. Like seriously, I, I, you know, again, if they're trying to make people, uh, you know, just watch the damn thing because, oh, they'll watch it no matter what. No, I, I think, like, honestly, it, it, it was what it needed to be, I think. I mean, for a first episode, you know, I, I have a rule of three. Actually, well, first off, I have a rule that after I've been burned so many times by TV shows that I get completely sucked into and then they get canceled, I will not watch a show until I hear that it's been renewed. So if it's something I'm interested in, I will record an entire season of it and wait to hear if it's been renewed. If it's been renewed, then I'll go back and watch it. Well, they've already announced that this has been renewed. Like, they've already, like, the first episode just broadcast last night and they were renewed before even broadcast. You so. could make it Walking Dead to Grassy High in Saskatchewan, <laughs> Saskatoon, and people will watch it because Walking Dead, oh my god, I want to buy the figures. And I think it's, it, I think it's going to be interesting because I mean that's that's been the one big like people have talked about it on you know whether it's message boards or on the Talking Dead or anything like that. You know, okay, so how did civilization collapse? And that's that that's the premise of this of this show. Is, you know, from, you know, they're not going to show you who the original, apparently, just based on what I was reading, they're not going to show you who the originally infected person was or how it got, you know, got out or got released or whatever. But it's that initial just breakdown of society and how fast, like, a civilized country falls into we all the world played you see in Walking Dead. Germicide or whatever that stupid game is where you start infecting people with the flu and then you watch it as a, it goes airborne. We've all played it. We all know. We all saw that stupid Brad Pitt movie with the fast zombies. We all, we all know. Apparently, I was actually corrected. I was talking about that with the uh, the Rack Show guys yesterday, and, and I was corrected when I mentioned Twenty Eight Days Later, uh, because apparently they weren't zombies. They were they were infected with rabies. Ah, shut that's, up, that's, Rack that's, Show. It's apparently a huge distinction. <laughs> so stupid. Were, I'll give you scabies. What well, what they have rabies? Yes. A raccoon bite them? Yeah. Who knows? Dumb. Yeah. Let's quit reading crib notes. <laughs> but no, one of the, I mean, let, you know, going back to mobile apps, I think one of the cooler stories that came out this week is they did a study. And, you know, we both have um, kids in this age range. So for me, I was, I was insanely intrigued. But they ran um, like a creativity study on mobile apps w- with 7 to 12-year-olds. And they tested 41,000 kids. And then they ran the same test with um, adults, teenagers, right? Kind of a equal groups of both sides. And they found out that the kids from 7 to 12, you know, basically had better ideas. They were more original. They were more transformational. Um, everything about them was was more in terms of moving forward than, than what the adults came up with. And I'm just wondering how fast until, like, Detroit Lab starts hiring third graders. <laughs> no, but think about that for a minute. What what What... That has to say to the industry when, when you got a bunch of kids kind of... Well, dude, we heard that from Andrea last week when she was in here talking about, you know, the Pontiac school system and yeah. the hackathon that they want to have. And that's that was part of it is they wanted the kids to have a big 
say in what kind of apps were going to be developed because the kids are the ones that deal with this nonsense. They know where they're paying. It's business 101. Ask your customer what's wrong and then solve that problem and you will make money. That's how it goes. Ah, the mind of a child. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's the thing. I mean, I think kids don't know really how to uh, what a data center is and how the internet works and like internet of things and that their minds aren't all convoluted with with wires and and you know Cisco code right they just want to they just want it what do you want and they'll tell you what they want they they want their PewDiePie videos and, right and, now and want, now yeah and that's all they, and their Netflix that's and I want to tape myself playing Minecraft and I want my friends to make fun of me that's what you know I mean but think about it though they're the ones right now that are basically going to tell us what we're what we're gonna you know i can't even i don't even want to know what in 20 years the crap <laughs> and we're gonna sit there going i was there when it started we're gonna be like the gold rush it'll, it'll be like terminator 2 i the opening of terminator you know i was there on judgment day <laughs> when all the technology went to hell and there's yeah these damn kids today when when aol first i got the first aol cd that's, <laughs> that's when everything went to hell well and actually i thought this was the, kind of a segue but this was an interesting story i thought so i you know everybody remembers the old because apparently they're not on the new releases but in Windows, um, always had you know Solitaire and Free Cell and Minesweeper and uh, Hearts on it. And there's a reason why they put those games there, and it's not just because they wanted to have stupid games on their computers. So like you know, Minesweeper came out with Windows three, uh, and it was basically to train you how to use a mouse because nobody was used to a graphical user interface. Everybody was, you know, command line and make it user friendly. Um, Nobody played Minesweeper. Uh, the hell they didn't. Uh, you know, and Hearts. You know, Hearts came out with Windows 3.1.1 for work groups, which was, you know, supposed to teach you how to play and interact with people over a network for the first time, you know, and, and do that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was just, I, I just thought that was interesting. Like, as much as we, you know, beat on Mac, Microsoft and bag on Microsoft, that actually was kind of a cool thing they did because, yeah, I mean, all of the... Uh, in the, yeah, I mean, all the stupid little games that they had in there were for a good purpose that actually did what they were supposed to do. I'm mind blown. I'm like Berenstain Bears mind blown. <laughs> no, I just thought they were stupid games. Like the whole, like, teach me how to mouse. Like, that's, my, that's the, dude, you learn best when you don't even think you're learning. My two year old the, knows how to mouse. You know, you're going to tell me that I learned how to mouse from Minesweeper? No. Leisure Sweet Larry. Or Loser Suit. Loved Leisure Suit Larry. In the land of the lounge lizards. Do they bring that back? Could they, they please? Dude, they've run maybe five or six different updates to that every, over the years. Um, it, it, it's out there. There's, it, they have all the simulations online and all the memes online and all that fun no, stuff. No, I want so, it like yeah. modernized now. An updated Leisure I don't know. I, yeah. I will look for you and, and see what the last And not dressed like Larry Klein from, from Three's Company. Like, oh, no. He still has to be. He's Leisure Suit Larry. Uh, point taken. He has to be wearing a Leisure Suit. You can wear like that's right up there with why are the Buicks next to the pants? <laughs> it's the alphabet. <laughs> so you can't have an affliction T shirt on and like no because that would not be a leisure suit. Oh, all right. <laughs> next, <laughs> there were uh, anger, lots and lots and lots of anger was coming out of downtown uh, on Saturday because there were like three different events going on. There was a. Kenny Chesney concert. Is there that a, why? Because they, they were playing country music? They were playing music? Kenny Chesney, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a Tigers game. Uh, it's true. And there was something else going on. Um, and there were lots that were no shit charging people $50. Kid Rock. To park. That was a... Uh, $50. That's every Lions game is 50 bucks. I, I have no idea. Every uh, Lions Sunday, it's $50. You know, I... Well, and they prohibited tailgating, and they did, you know, because they needed every spot available and all that kind of nonsense. I mean, it, it, I, I, I think that's ridiculous. Fifty dollars for what, like an eight foot by twelve foot piece of asphalt? You know what? You have you're an asphalt. You know why they do it? Because they can. <laughs> no, they because they, they, they can. What's the difference between hotels jacking up prices and Uber doing prices? That's all it is. Is is they're taking uh, taking what's available to them? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it's absolutely no different. I don't. I'll never park in those places. Let leave it to Mike Dennis, by the way, who just chimed in with uh, a link for you for the latest version of Leisure Suit Larry. That's oh, thank you, Mike. <laughs> you, I owe you one. Um, no, I, I'm sorry. Like I, I just I don't get that. Like we, how many? Well, how many times? Well, so okay. If that's going to be your mindset, then explain to me every time we ever parked outside of St. Andrews Hall. 
and we had the exact same argument with the exact same guy yeah. uh, that ran the exact same lot. Yeah. Like, and you were just as mad at him as I was No, every time. Well, I'm not going to park. When it says 50 bucks, I'm not going to park there. There's enough lots and there's enough crap places to go. Like this guy, the guy at St. Andrews pissed me off because his sign said seven dollars and he wanted to charge me fifteen. Then he asked, "How long are you going to stay?" Then he wants my keys. Like this town is such a mess when it comes to parking lots. Like seriously, just build a couple. Dan Gilbert, I know you're listening. Build us some parking structures, Dan. <laughs> Save us from these lots. <laughs> you're our only hope, Obi Wan. No, seriously, these these guys are like. Give me your keys. I'm like, kiss my ass. I'm not giving. Then he's like, I'm charging you full price. I go, then I'm not parking here. But by that time, I'm already late to my stupid meeting, and then I got to park there anyway. So I'm like, then I throw my money at his feet. I I, throw like $10 down and walk away. Yeah. What do you, Tommy, go ahead, I dare you. Do you know what? You get scared about the dumbest stuff, by the way. Um, All your spiders and your stupid diseases. Dude, they found a flying freaking spider. Like, are you like, is, are you talking about that story? No, because they found a flying freaking spider. I'm talking about the one thing that scared me, <laughs> watching the video of the Google Atlas robot. Oh yeah, speaking of Terminator. Oh, I don't like that. I had nightmares about that son bitch. Yeah, that's because that that thing's gonna have a brain. Because uh, I watched, you know what the thing was? I put two and two together. It's because gonna have a Google brain. I watched Ex Machina, which was basically. Larry Page making a robot, uh-huh. and it was basically tied to the internet. Them, their internets, uh-huh. and had a Google brain, and it had face recognition, uh-huh. and knew everything, and it basically knew how to reason. Google's building a Terminator. They're building a damn Terminator that'll ride in a self-driving car, so it can still shoot at you or a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah cre- no, not good. No, the video it was creepy how it walked. I'm like, how do you build that and go like, it's amazing? Like, it scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah, how do you not have that Robert Oppenheimer atomic bond or atomic bomb? What the hell have we just done? Moment. <laughs> like, did like none of are none of them allowed to see like the you know whether it's you know Terminator or any of the other robots gone bad movies b- before they like go work there? No, and that's the thing. It's not like it's RoboCop where you make the objective you know not to kill Dick Jones, but then what happens if you fire him? Then he gets to shoot him. It's bull- <laughs> you know it's bullshit. So what happens if the stupid a robot? And they're like your objective, and like, what happens if? Larry, you know, it, who owned who owned the <laughs> Google robot? <laughs> no, because then the, what's he, he makes the objective for is yeah, Google, nope. Google builds a couple million of them and just, you know, ships them off to Washington and don't harm Google employees. Yeah, exactly. You know, go take out Redmond and off we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Microsoft bad. Right. There was a stupid movie I watched for like five minutes, but it was the worst movie ever on Netflix. And it was about um, the next world war. And it wasn't country versus country. It was company versus company. And it was basically like Boeing versus Microsoft versus, you know, all the corporations basically bought their own weapons. Google is going to basically own this planet. I, I, I foresee it. It has been spoken and it is true. Wouldn't surprise me. No. So, you know, uh, it, laughably, uh, there, there is more mayhem uh, coming out from the Ashley Madison hack. We oh, are, God. We are, we are weeks later, and it is still happening. Because, again... Are you getting a divorce? Dude, I'm, no, it's still, <laughs> still in the clear. I'm loving the fact that, you know, everybody... It's sanctity of marriage. 38 million accounts on AshleyMadison.com. Just saying. Um, but, no, so they had... You know, we talked about this, the little delete function that, they, you know, it would permanently delete you and all your history from the website um, that they didn't actually delete anything and so all of those user IDs and information are still in the file that's from the, the 10 gig file that's floating around but they charge people $19 to do so and apparently that racked up to about $1.7 million in just 2014 and did nothing and did nothing and so now there's all you know there's this whole class action fraud lo- lawsuit brewing uh, I do love that Ashley Madison has uh, posted apparently a 370 it's a very odd number $379,000 bounty uh, for whoever can identify the hackers that, that pulled the data. I remember uh, I had a bar conversation on Saturday, and I was talking about it. I go, who the hell signs up on Ashley Madison with a real email anyway? They use the crappy Hotmail one. <laughs> I go, why would you get busted? And this woman is walking right by me, and she like completely double took me like, you pig. <laughs> I'm like, what's going to say? You always create a crap Hotmail, like Big Papa 69 at Hotmail. That's what you sign up on Ashley Madison. Clowns getting divorced over this stuff. Not only divorced, but there have now been uh, two suicides. Attributed 
to it. Good where God. they, you know, their information was leaked, uh, and like in the notes that they left, this is why they were doing it, why they did it, and I mean, it's it. it wow, I mean, there's there's real real life fallout from this kind of nonsense now. I want to end this segment proper because last week we mind blew everyone with the Berenstein Bears. Yeah. Um, this week we I saw a video that changed my outlook. It ruined my childhood, changed my outlook. Where Daniel Larusso, I watched it, and this is a bit of a stretch. But he's he's insinuating that Daniel Larusso from the Karate Kid was in fact the psychopath bully and not Johnny Lawrence, yeah, who was the actual Karate Kid. And they they walk through it where you know like the opening sequence uh, on the beach and you know so Daniel is trying to instigate you know things and he's trying to you know get out trying to talk to Elizabeth Shue trying to get Allie's attention and so you know he, he you know he tries to make a run at, at uh, Johnny Lawrence and all Johnny Lawrence does is basically move and stick his leg out so that Daniel can fall down and he does that twice well then so how does Danny Larusso like like react to that well he sucker punches him in the mouth and like when you look at it with that mindset. And you do, like if you ignore the rest of the movie and you just watch the clips that are in this piece, um, it yeah. I mean, I, I can kind of see it. Well, then the guy said, like, how would you like? Then, then uh, after the sucker punch, Lawrence beats the shit out of him. So then Larusso goes oh, to karate then, school, and then he diffuses the situation by leaving immediately. Right, right. Yeah. But like I said, like, Larusso goes to karate school afterwards, and they go, "How would you feel if you just lost in a fight?" And the guy you lost, you just goes out and buys a gun. Yeah, like, this is what it's like. <laughs> so then he goes. Then he goes into the the karate tournament, or no? Then he's like, "No, don't touch the prima donna." It's so, like, and then he then you know yeah, Larusso openly mocking, him mocking. And, yeah. So then they get to the tournament, and then he goes. He doesn't even know the rules because he's going to Miyagi. Like, what are the rules? You know, don't know, don't know, <laughs> right? So then, like uh, Lawrence, who's been training for this his whole life, you know, he's a danger to himself and others, yeah. right? And then what did they call her, uh, Miyagi? Like the 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 uh, oh, the evil sorcerer, the that, sorcerer that gives him magic powers in his leg, right? And then he kicks him in the head and win a tournament that doesn't allow. Yeah, no kicks of the face, and he right. and that's the, that's always been my point is he won a tournament that said no kicks of the face with a kick to the face like that that should not have been that he should not have gotten the trophy but this whole time if you ever watch uh barney stimson is, is prophetic he's been saying this this whole time yeah johnny lawrence was the karate kid not Larusso. Larusso was the punk ass so anyway that's my <laughs> my childhood's blown and um <laughs> we're gonna be back segment two with natalia from bisbee and uh this is the it in the d show and uh we'll see you in a minute it in the d networking detroit one beer at a time it in the d dot com this show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and is part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT and the D Show. Do you know what your storage costs? We do, and that's why we're doing something about it. At Quantum, we think you're just paying too much, period. We've been helping our customers protect their data since 1981 while reducing their total cost of ownership, often by as much as 40%. We believe your strategic data protection plan should take advantage of all available technology. Let's talk some more at 586-745-4DXI. That's 586-745-4394. Quantum. Established name. New ideas. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. That was a good segue from the Karate Kid into the greatest. I think it worked out well. The greatest Joe Esposito song ever made. <laughs> You're the best around. I swear to God, every time I hear that song, I want to go to the gym, and I, I still don't. But it's I still I well, want maybe, to. Maybe if you heard it in the car on the way to the gym, right? Or maybe if you heard it as you were driving by a gym, right? Or maybe we'll have to work maybe, on that. maybe when you hear it, you want to have a beer with a guy named Jim. <laughs> maybe, maybe Uber will take me, and then I'll start going. <laughs> maybe can Uber can bring the gym to you. Oh, see? <laughs> Welcome back. This is segment two of the IT and the D Show, episode 106. We are hanging out in the Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan, and we are proud to be part of the Podcast Detroit Network. This is Bob the Sales Guy, always here with Dave the Geek. Nuri the FNG is on assignment in India. Find us online, itnd.com. Give us a like on the Facebooks slash itnd and follow us on the Twitters 
slash IT and And oh, by the way, we just got Instagram because Alexis just followed us. We are at Instagram slash IT and a bunch of other stuff. Find us online and you know what to do. But hey, I met one of the coolest people in my life. Um, this past week, I got introduced with a mutual colleague from work, Nicole. Um, and and, and I got, we are proud and honored to have Natalia here, wow. who's the CEO of Visby, um, formerly Vision Boards. I think everybody knows you from there, at least yeah. from the press-wise. Yep. But thank you for hanging out with us. Oh, it is my pleasure. I'm really stoked to be here. So really? You're going to yeah. drop some <laughs> some skater stuff? You told someone. me to be cool and relaxed, <laughs> so this is it, man. We didn't tell you to be that relaxed. No, oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, whoops. Zip it up. No, but I knew you were one one of our people when we, you know, I met you at nine in the morning and all of a sudden it was sailor talk and I'm like, I like this hey person. Man, don't don't give away all my <laughs> trade secrets. No, right on. Yeah. But um, we appreciate you coming out. So, so Visby's got under a little transformation. So talk to me about kind of what Visby is and let, let, let's kind of talk about the methodology around it. Yeah, it's a it's a SaaS model, and to be honest, I originally created the idea as a B two C, so for consumers, um, and it's based off this really wildly popular concept known as a vision board. There's something like 44 million unique searches on Google for what a vision board is. See, that's totally new to me. I had no idea this. Yeah, you know, before I met you, I had no idea this was a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. And, you know, when Oprah Winfrey blogs about something, it's a it's a darn thing. Oh, so, yeah, you get a vision board and you get and a vision board. And you do. And you do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, I mean, it's a pretty basic concept, but I find a lot of entrepreneurship is just, you know, not doing anything that's that crazy. Sometimes it's just doing something that's simple and effective. And it's associating visual imagery to your goals. Um, it turns out that our brains are are more visually oriented than anything else. So um, is it part of the whole like inspirational talks? Like if you can see it, you can be it. The show is, but it's <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> you know I, I'm trying to make it, but I'm trying to I'm trying to bring it to um, a whole new level and and kind of justify it with a lot of science and testimonials that that are really a lot more credible. Um, I'm really trying to to transfer this whole motivational place into something that's way more, you know, I guess, um, relatable, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, it's associating visual images to your goals. Um, so if you've always wanted to go to Paris, you'd have a picture of the Eiffel Tower on your vision board. If you've always wanted to, I don't know, what, a, what do tech people really, really want to do? Beer. Not talk about tech. <laughs> Drink beer. Drink beer? Yeah. So let's say you want to own your own brewery you oh, know, or yeah. make your own beer. Just like uh, our friend from Falling Down went from IT to building a brewery. See? There exactly. you have it. Yeah. So that would be on your vision board, you know? Okay. Yeah. And so we're so, bringing I mean, technology I, solutions to it. You know, obviously, we're, we're using the best of um, collage editing, um, curated content. Um, you know, that's the basic infrastructure. And then um, bringing in engagement features. Um, so there's goal setting, accountability features. We're going to be building out a mobile app where you'll be able to get text reminders, alarm clock setting. So we're, we're taking that visualization process into your hands and making it more engagement um, oriented. And I mean, again, the bare bones is like, you know, you're creating a like wallpaper for your phone, which sounds rudimentary, but at the end of the day, it's staring at you in the face. Right. Let's say there's four things I want to do. I want to save up for vacation. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to hang out more with my friends or, you know, and those things are just just constantly reminding you and staring at you. So it's kind of a. Yeah, that's the MVP version. That's our 101 version is is the wallpapers and then the goal setting and reminders. But we're going to be building out really awesome features like alarm clock settings. So you wake up to your um, slideshow vision board, audio features like guided visualization. And as I mentioned, it was built as a B2C product. But um, I have found through my research that um, it's really applicable in the B2B space in, in two ways. One, as an employee engagement tool. And then um, what has recently come to my attention is a B2B to, or B2B to C tool. So even for their customers. Um, so for instance, I have a financial planning firm that wants to use it for retirement planning. And these are things that I never, ever in a million years saw this tool being used in that space. Yeah, I wouldn't either. But then again, if you have whatever you figure, if you're planning, you know, that, that, that would fall right into it. This, the two coincide with each other, right? If you're planning for, um, you know, retirement financial or for, you know, basically heavier goals and visions and all that stuff. Yeah, it you know, applies put it on the same to page. anything from an athlete to a professional to someone planning for retirement. And the applications are actually boundless, which makes it kind of difficult um, for me to have like a, you know, 
a target entry point, but um, I've been advised by very smart people to focus on the B2B space in the short term for one to many sales and and you know a little bit more of an opportunity for capital um, early stage capital okay yeah. so I'm a complete noob to this though is uh, is there a science behind this or what is there something that's attributed to like hey when this stuff's in, in, enacted um, you know basically your things could change you know, do you follow where I'm going with this yeah it's- yeah there's definitely scientific um, support for this so uh, our visual brain you know there's something like um, two more million neurons a, a second are being used when you're visualizing versus writing something down. That's um, why I watch the movie and never read a book. See? Yeah. See? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, and some of it has to be just basic human nature. I mean, yeah. once you let something slip out of your conscious thought process, it's that much easier to never get it back, whether that's a goal, uh, you know, a, a, a friend, a trip, whatever. I mean, that's it's that much. Like, once you stop focusing on something, it's as good as gone. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's, it, there, there's more studies that suggest the subconscious brain is influenced heavily by visualization as well. And to me, I, I just like to say the proof's in the pudding. So, you know, I'm, I'm just finding... I like pudding. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just lead with um, amazing testimonials. Um, anything from Katy Perry putting a Grammy Award on her vision board to Jordan Spieth, who just won the, you know, all these PGA tournaments, who speaks to visualizing his goal. My favorite story, I'm a Michigan State Spartan is actually um, Coach D'Antonio flew out to Pasadena, Texas in 2013 and had his daughter film him on on her iPhone celebrating the 2014 um, Rose Bowl win, and that manifested itself. It came true. So there's something to be said about people that are already successful doing this one way and the other, so I'm just trying to bring technology and engagement to that process. Well, that was always, I'm, you know, going back to, I played a lot of basketball you know, in junior high, high school, and then I was on the, the B team at community college. So I, you can say I played college basketball. But um, sh- sure. um, <laughs> but, but that was always you know, shooting free throws. That was always very methodical of see yourself shooting it, for, you know, yep. going in first and then shoot. It's like, very always- embraced in the athletic realm. So yeah. I'm saying why don't we use it in other parts of our life? You know, it doesn't just have to be, you know, sinking the, the golf into the, the, the hole there. There can be uh, applications in many parts of your life. Well, you were, well, I mean, so what was the thing with, uh, you, we were talking uh, before the show, um, and you had a big story about, uh, like, Steve Harvey. Like, this is getting, um, where it's, you know, Oprah, the, there's some, like, inspirational speakers and people that are really adopting oh, yeah. this as a, yeah. as, a, as a main platform in their lives. It's totally embraced, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so Steve Harvey, who has his own television show, Oprah Winfrey, just, they both recently, in the last month alone, had shows talking about vision board and the, and the, uh, and most people, this is the problem I'm solving, um, entrepreneurs <laughs> out there. Um, the problem I'm solving is if you can believe it, it's 2015. Most people are cutting out pictures from magazines and finding images and putting them on a cork board or on a, you know, a CVS, you go to CVS and buy a poster. The Rocky four montage with the it picture of Drago in the mirror. That this yeah. is how, and there's something to be said about, you know, spending the time and some people are really, really wanting to do it that way and I have nothing I have nothing bad to say about that but I think you know living in 2015 there's really innovative ways we can take this process to the next level well so which actually feeds into we had a question uh, oh, coming in via Twitter cool. which was is it is it a WYSIWYG app? Like, can I open it up and just start clicking and dragging, or do yeah, I have I mean, to know we have, stuff? We have some uh, mobile compliance. We, we started off with a, um, a web app. Um, okay. And so, you know, I'm an early stage, um, you know, tech startup here. So um, there is some mobile compliance, and we are intending on building the mobile app very soon. I'm, I'm um, looking to, you know, get an investment round organized here very soon. So we'll be able to put some money into building out the technology. And uh, we, do, we do have Nuri listening live from Delhi, India. So we have oh, a, hey. I think it's our only international uh, live listener that we've ever Probably. had. Probably. <laughs> right? Well, we, yeah, we don't count Canada, right? Shout out to Nuri. Wish you were here. So <laughs> I'll leave it. No, Canada don't count. Yeah, scenery, scenery is here. Wish you were beautiful, Nuri. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, I mean, how how does someone use it now? Like, if I, if I go to Visby, and it's uh, visby.co, yes? Yeah, yeah. If I go there, like, how do, like how, do I, how do I start? Yeah, you just sign up. You create an account. It's it's a free user account, so we, we've launched with our freemium version. Hopefully, your followers and uh, listeners. We, we play games. Yeah. We're, we're aware of freemium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've launched with the freemium. So you're going to ask version. us to like buy coins, and then we spend <laughs> coins yeah. on I'm Facebook sure pictures. Your, your and then. Is one more than the average audience I speak to you on this. Yeah. So you just uh, if it's a free account, um, you're you're kind of 
um, asked to create your end um, output solution. So if you want it to be um, your mobile screensaver or whatever screensaver, and you're, you're um, taken to our curated image library, but you can also customize, upload your own. And okay. we have um, you know, state-of-the-art kind of collage editing tools. We're, we're looking at different things like anything from PicMonkey to Photor and, and making sure that we're staying at least um, somewhat on par with, you know, you know, say there are collage right. editing tools. And then, um, but then you're taken into, this is one of our biggest differentiators is setting, setting goals with due dates. There's actually a statistic um, that's been proven. If you just write down your darn goal and set a darn due date. Deadlines, go are, figure. You are 42% more likely just by writing it down to actually achieve it. And then when you add in things like external accountability, um, the, the odds increase even higher. And then you add in visualization. And now we're talking, baby. So um, we have the goal setting tool that is syncs up to the Google Calendar and um, also accountability. You can invite up to three friends to see your goals and deadlines. So you have external accountability checking in on you. So again, this is the basic MVP. And then you can you know con- convert that um, to any screensaver. You can print it at home. So you, do, you can have a printed end product. Okay. Eventually, we'll be building out an e-commerce store once I have licensing rights to my image library. Right. And we all know that's fun and not necessarily This cheap. is something that I've needed like my whole life, and I've, it took me this long to find it and go, where the hell have you been? Oh, I'm yeah. The, the first time I, I heard so about bad. it, the first time I heard about a vision board, I felt like a ton of bricks hit my – I was like, how, what have I been focusing on? What am I thinking about? All? I'm like, I should be focusing my energy differently. I remember being very – excited and upset that it, it you know it was like that aha moment that was like where has this been no that's the thing i'm task driven i'll put stuff in my calendar like get this done get that done but i'm not i don't have goals right other than being being a sales guy i have a number over my head at the end of yeah. year that's my only goal I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you half the reason i built this product outside of doing some customer validation thank you very much um is is that i wanted it and needed it for myself i know and live and breathe and it just I love this stuff and I still realize that visualizing on a daily basis and I, I recommend right when you wake up or right before you go to sleep because you're actually closest to the theta state let's talk about the subconscious brain and that's really what you're trying to influence is your sub- subconscious brain which has already been programmed by everything else in the free right. world right we're more familiar with the Balmer effect oh. like when you're like .08 drunk like that's when you're at, at peak ah, that's level. right that's, that's when yeah. it really comes out right yeah, exactly. okay, and, okay. <laughs> when you wake up before you go to sleep and when Drinking. <laughs> right, right. We don't do that. That's when you create your vision board. That is when you do so, it. So, so how do you answer – okay, I, I'm not going to lie. When I hear motivational speakers and Oprah and, and that kind of stuff, I, I get a little skeptical. Like I, that's, okay. that's when I start going – Skeptical, Dave, yeah, is skeptical. A lot of Hoke people them. do. I think a lot like of that's, people yeah, do. Yeah, that's, 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 that's when I go sounds hokey. So like how like, – but I mean you're, you are. You're throwing out – uh, an amazing amount of like numbers and facts and figures yeah. and statistics. I mean, is is I'm, all that kind of stuff out on the website for people like do? No, really, look. Yeah, and and that's I'm really committed to leading with more and more science and facts and testimonials and and also making this um, you know a gender neutral approach because and all my both of my testimonials ones from NBC's Biggest Loser um, Pete Thomas is out of Ann Arbor. He lost all of that weight and kept it off. He actually holds the record for losing the most amount of weight um, on that show. And he's out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. And he used vision boarding in that process and continues to use vision boarding. And, and now he's a Visby, you know, kind of proponent. And um, the other one is an NFL player. So I'm being really, really um, purposeful about not making this a hokey thing that someone can just turn away from. I think that audience has been played to enough. And I think this messaging has relevance. It's actually legit. And I, I'm being really cognizant about making sure that the average everyday person doesn't just say, mm, screw this self-help Hokey. stuff. Hokey. Yeah. cuckoo stuff. <laughs> hey, you, look, Tony we, Robbins. You yeah. Know. yeah. Exactly. I'm really, really committed to making sure people understand that this is this is legit. It's well, you won. What was the you won? Like it was like a national, or was it a global? Yeah, the global con- um, up, uh, up global startup contest based on this concept. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it was really validated on two levels. We won the Detroit Startup Weekend based on this concept. Um, you know, we started an e-commerce store and had um, I don't know, like fifty orders before the weekend was over, and um, and then went on to uh, compete against twenty three hundred teams globally based on this concept and. It was open to international voting, and we took first place in in Up Global's uh, innovation circle. That's insane! It's insane. I flew out to, and I'm, you know, you put that on your resume and everything. I know. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah, I flew out to San Francisco to the launch fest. I demoed my, you know, I guess alpha in quotations product, and so it was a cocktail napkin with some scribbles on it. 
Uh, yeah, that's, no, that's, I, when I hear alpha, that's what I. Uh, <laughs> no, it was actually pretty functional. It was pretty functional considering, but uh, yeah, no, it was a really amazing. It's the whole thing has been quite um, a roller coaster ride, as anyone can imagine. It's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, frankly, as well. Um, I've had to persevere some interesting things, but um, I'm I'm here and I'm I'm starting to get traction, and it's it's very exciting. So why why still in Detroit? So I mean, if if this got global attention, why? Why not go hit a New York or a Silicon Valley or someplace like that and, oh, and, and try to well, make it go? I mean, born and raised in Detroit, and there's a renaissance occurring here, and it's it's amazing. Honestly, I, and I to me, I think it's a huge advantage to, to have a tech startup in Detroit right now. Um, I mean, really, you're a, a bigger fish in a smaller pond, and that smaller pond's not going to be that way for much longer. True. It's really growing, and it's going to be growing fast. So you, you have this unique opportunity. Um, I'm also highly networked because I grew up and was born and raised here, but I'm also comfortable here, and and I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot to that. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just had someone criticize it, uh, not criticizing, but critiquing me from Silicon Valley on something, and it's, I don't know, there's something that's just a little bit more identifiable and comfortable here for me, too, and um, I don't it's know. It's home. I get it, too. It's home, and plus, I would, I just love supporting Detroit, really. It's, it's amazing city. It's, I, I can't wait for the Renaissance, you know, to, to well, transpire. And plus, your response to that critique can be, screw you, Silicon Valley Jag, I'm from Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I love Detroit, and I, I, I'm happy to be a part of, uh, you know, building it back up to what, where it needs to be. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say, so, like, uh, you mentioned, you know, a mobile app. So, like, what's what's next with Visby? Like, what are, what are you focusing on now that people that either have already played with it or are thinking about going to play with it? Yeah. Like, what's, what's coming on the near yeah. horizon? Yeah, so in terms of, like, the development, yeah, mobile app is going to be on the near horizon once we understand which, you know, functionality people right. are really demanding and, and stuff like that. And, and the next iteration, so like I mentioned, slideshow functionality, alarm clock settings, um, accountability features, the B2B is, you know, I'm in, very interested to see how this could be used as an employee engagement tool and all that other stuff, too. Um, and then content, you know. So above and beyond the utility, I think content is going to be king. So we're actually exploring having our own co- uh, podcast, as you know, um, blog, video, just content, because there's a lot to be said, interviewing people that have visualized and succeeded and just having some cool conversations around it. I mean, to me, um, the seeing it as one thing, the accountability is another. It'd be nice if you had like, you know, you know, Bob, you've, you've tried accountability. But no, no, no. It didn't work out for That's you. That's why I wanted, to, I wanted to yell at me. Like, you no. haven't lost 10 pounds, you asshole, like every no, morning. So Bob, That's my Bob alarm was so clock. proud. He, <laughs> he, sent, like, uh, he sent the guys an email. And this was about, what, six, seven years ago now? What story? I don't know what story So Bob telling. sends an email out. And he's like, guys, you know what? I'm feeling great. I'm, oh, you I know, hate I, you. I joined Lifetime Fitness. I hate you. Life's good. He's like, you know, I've dropped like 10 pounds. I'm feeling better than I've ever felt. And so the first thing I did was I took the email and copied everybody and forwarded it to Fox 2 Problem Solvers and asked them to investigate why uh, Fox 2 or why Lifetime Fitness was turning my friend into a woman. Because no guy sends that email to his friends. <laughs> I, was, I was proud of myself. See, this is why I can't have nice things. My friends are all assholes. <laughs> So they, they, they just be careful who you invite to help you with that's right. Yeah, no, you, no, you no I'm definitely not inviting you. I know that. <laughs> be careful, and that's an, op- an optional thing. You know, like some people are very personal about their goals and their visions, and some people really want that external accountability. I just want, you know, one size doesn't fit all when it comes right. to your goal setting and visualizing. So you can be private, you can completely be private, or you can you can let the world know. Cool. Very so cool. we find you at Visby, V-I-Z-B-E V-I-Z-B-E, dot co. V-I-Z-B-E, dot co. Like visualize and become your vision. Visby, uh, become your vision is our um, is our tagline. So Visby dot co. Check yeah, because it it's Visbycom on Twitter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. At Visbycom, and um, and then you know you look up Visby for Facebook. So follow us, please, and um, support this this cool startup and, and follow our you know our traction and progress. Well, yeah, I we'll have it. and we'll have all the links and all that fun stuff to all the different profiles, everything in, in the recap. That. Absolutely, very yeah. very cool. I tell you, I appreciate like the it. time. Oh, I appreciate um, you guys having me on. Absolutely. And this won't be the last, hopefully. Um, stay tuned. Segment three, we're going to have Alexis on from Tech Systems. We're going to be talking about the job market, the pink slip party, and uh, IT recruiting. This is the IT in the D show, and uh, we'll be right back. IT in the D, networking Detroit, one beer at a time. IT in the D.com. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and as part of the Podcast Detroit Network. 
Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hey guys, it's Time Hog, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT&D Show. Online Tech is the Midwest leader in secure, compliant, enterprise cloud and collocation hosting services. The company's network of five data centers protect mission-critical applications to ensure they are always available, secure, and comply with government and industry regulations. Backed by independent HIPAA, PCI, SOC 2, and Safe Harbor audits, Online Tech delivers exceptional experiences for companies in need of a strategic hosting partner. For more information, call 877-740-5028, email contact us at onlinetech.com, or visit www.onlinetech.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. And welcome back. This is segment three, episode 106. This is the IT in the D Show. Can we just have one episode that's nothing but the Dr. Detroit theme for like two hours? That would make me really, really happy. Just play the movie. Oh, we should totally do that. (laughs) We can just do that anyway. We should do MST3K with the movie fed into the board. And then we could sit here and watch the movie and MST3K the movie while it's going on. Everybody could hear it. And maybe a Google Hangout and hook it in the video. No, we should start doing that for all the movies and just put it on our SoundCloud feed. <laughs> Bob and Dave watch Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are hanging out in the Detroit Sound Studios above uh, Activate Gaming in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. And we are proud to be part of the Podcast Detroit Network. This is We Bob. damn well better be. This is Bob the Sales Guy. And uh, you're sitting next to Dave the Geek. Nuri, the FNG, is in New Delhi, India. But listening. Listening live in Delhi. Not New Delhi. Where's New Delhi? Um, find it's us. near Old Delhi. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> find us online. <laughs> ITintheD.com. And uh, give us a likes on the uh, everythings and the follows on the th- stuff. Exactly. And, uh, so we're at ITintheD.com. We are at Facebook.com slash ITintheD. And we are on Twitter at ITintheD. Because we are ITintheD and you. <laughs> and you. Still are not, you nope. scheming evil. Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, all right, coming back to guests, we uh, we and I feel bad about this. Like, back in the day, we had a recruiter on every single show. Like, that was just, like, a standard part of our, our, of our shtick. And then we kind of fell away from that. And, like, it's been, like, we've had two in, like, the past five episodes. Um, so, we, we, and we, we heard from people we need more of that. So, we have Alexis, is it Bine? Bin. Bin. Yep. Uh, from Tech Systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you... You showed up at one of our Blackfin events. I did. Um, and we got to yakking and talking. And you guys have some kind of cool stuff going on. So wanted to get you in and, and hear more about tech systems and, and what's going on here in the area as far as you guys are concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we are tech systems. We're the nation's actually leading IT staffing and solutions company. Um, we offer IT talent management expertise. We do majority of what we do is um, staffing solutions. Right. So we IT technical professionals here in the local market. So mostly uh, like recruiting and placement, like on contract gigs. Do you guys do headhunting as well? Is it? We offer all three. Uh, okay. Majority of what we do is contract to hire positions. Okay. We do offer as well direct placement, and then some contract where there be like say twelve right month or even all the way down to as low as three months. Gotcha. Where they just strictly contract for projects um, specifically. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, and what actually what I thought was interesting but when we were having conversations uh, with Tech Systems, I want to say a couple years ago, um, one of the reasons why I was really glad to see you guys coming around is we had always been um, known as like mid like mid experience and up. Like if you had at least you know three to five years of experience or higher. Yeah, come on out to IT and the D, and the recruiters will talk to you. And then mm-hmm. tech systems started showing up, and you guys deal with, like, in some, not that you don't deal with the more experienced folks as well, but you also deal with some of the, you know, entry level, a year Absolutely. or two under their belt, that kind of stuff. You know, you, I know you guys, like, you know, do a lot of, like, uh, like help desk placements, that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's really, really good because, I mean, we're, we do a lot, and I mean, that'll be the thing we were talking about on, uh, to some degree on Wednesday night. People who are looking to just break into the industry have such. I, I was just having the conversation with Sebastian on Facebook today, where he's like, you know, he was Eeyore. You know, nobody's hiring. 
There's no jobs. You got to have experience. I'm sad. You got to. I'm a sad panda. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, there are like, if you would like, idiot. I told you said you were coming to the event Thursday night. You didn't come to the event Thursday night. There's only so much I can do for you. You have to do some of it yourself. But you're one of the companies that I was, and, and I have. I mean, we've had people that have reached out via you know LinkedIn and, and some other places. Hey, I'm just getting started. Where do I go? And I've thrown them your way That's because great, I mean, yeah. you've been around the events. Absolutely. We definitely offer the entry-level positions. They are a little bit fewer and far between just yeah. because the IT industry, you definitely need experience. But we do see them, um, especially within the auto industry. You know, the big three, Chrysler, Ford, GM. Well, GM's ramping up, what, 1,400 positions oh, in yeah. Warren? Yep. I mean, that, and it's a lot exploding. of that is help desk. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Anything within that end user space, we definitely see those entry-level positions. No, oh, very cool. Mm-hmm. But, like, you know, like I said, I mean, it's not you don't deal with the you know mid to senior level absolutely. positions, too. Yep. But, I mean, it's, it's nice. I mean, a, a lot of a lot of companies have kind of foregone that you know the the less than three years experience folks just because they don't. Well, and they're looking at bill rates and profit margins and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, and it is what it is. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean it's it's good to know that you guys are are out there, you know, doing that kind of stuff. Yep. So, like, what are some of your biggest needs right now? Like, what is Tech Systems looking really hard and heavy for? I would say our biggest need right now are project managers, project and program managers. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yep, surprisingly. It's the wave, remember? There, there is. It comes and goes. Yeah. Like six months later, no. Yeah, we, 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 we're up to our eyeballs in PM. Right, we're good. right. Yeah. And then six months later, we oh my God, we need PM. Yeah. There was actually a study done this early this year of over uh, 500 business leaders. So at that CEO executive level right. that said that their uh, most detrimental position for driving business is going to be project managers. Really? Yep. It's very surprising. I, was, I had that same reaction. Because we need people to talk to the people. Well, no. So I mean, here's and because here's the thing: there are there are two different kinds of, of PMs in the world. There is the old world business only PM that you know that's where your you know the the PMP and the PMBOK and all that kind of stuff really came to like rose to prominence. And thankfully, they're kind of going away now. Mm -hmm. And companies are looking for PMs that have a technical background. Like they want somebody who came up through the ranks as a developer, as a coder, as an admin. So that, you know, because I mean, one of the big, let's be honest, one of the biggest problems that business-only PMs have always had is when, okay, how long is it going to take, you know, how long is, hey, developer, how long is it going to take to code that hello world? Um, Eight weeks. Okay, developer said eight weeks. It's going to be eight weeks whole when it really should be 20 <laughs> minutes. And so now you've got, you know, when you've got a uh, PM with a techie background, you can declare shenanigans immediately. <laughs> and, you know, I can code that app in four notes. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, that's, it's nice. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are seeing the same thing. Absolutely, yes. We, ha- we call them technical uh, pro- pro- I'm sorry, technical project managers right. and then functional project managers. Right. So what you're insisting. Yep. Yep, absolutely. So both, um, and definitely businesses are going more towards the technical project management role. That is and the pay grade's sick. I saw some stuff people were sending over to me to help them out. Like you're paying them, oh, dude. I, t- I told I told Scott and not obviously Sabellico, the the one guy that I shot that one gig that you shot me. Yeah, I'm like, dude. If you get that gig, you owe me a lot of beer. <laughs> Let's be perfectly clear. You owe me a '76 Cadillac convertible. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, for crying out loud. Like that, we should have set this up. We set this up so wrong in the beginning, Dave. Honest uh, to we've God, been, we've been damn fools. So like you know, we and we were joking, you know, before we came on the show that you know we're we're idiots. You know, we're we're going through all the process of you know a five hundred one c three and all that stuff. Um, and we have, you know, we've helped about sixteen hundred people find jobs that and, we know of. That well, we and, know and, of. and you know, I mean, the yeah, average absolutely. the average placement, you know, re- a referral fee is usually yeah, fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred, depending on the position and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So you do that math times sixteen hundred. And we don't take kickbacks. Like, we don't do any – so, yeah, we're morons <laughs> is what we are. And we try we to really – because like, we want to help right, people. Right. So we don't, we don't think about that number a lot because it makes us cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, what are we up to on karma points? We could poop on the steps of the Vatican. And just... Right. While spray painting nasty pictures on the wall and kicking out a window. Yes, right. absolutely. So uh, – but no. So tech systems. Uh, so, okay. So PMs, uh, like, do they have to be PMP certified? Are they just experience-based? What what kind of folks? Definitely experience-based. Um, there are some clients that prefer – and even require PMP, but I would say majority do not. No, it's definitely a plus, of course, yep. but it's not a requirement. No. So, are you seeing also? Uh, I know that you know. There's all the the agile world because I mean a lot of uh, you know the the typical PMP pinbox world is mm-hmm. all uh, traditionally waterfall based. You know, and more and more people are trying. Don't to Don't go, go chasing them. 
Yeah, it's right. Don't go chasing <laughs> waterfalls. Uh, and so more and more folks are looking to get into that agile space. Absolutely. Whether they understand it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, are you seeing more in like, okay, you know, I, hey, I'd love to see somebody and maybe they don't even know, you know, I'm looking for a scrum master or I'm looking for, you know, someone with an agile background and, and that sort of thing. Because, I mean, there's – a lot of people are asked, like I get asked that a lot, like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I've done this, that, and that with Agile, but I don't see anybody asking for it. What do I do? I would say definitely within the past few months or so, I've started to hear that word and just that that requirement more so often. But it's definitely something that, you know, hiring managers and businesses are looking for. Absolutely. Cool. So other than PMs, what, what, like, what else is out there just kind of making people pull their hair out? I would say aside from PMs, network engineers are going to be second. Again, in terms of no. highest in uh, demand. You know, there are, yeah, because people I haven't are, heard that in a while. <laughs> there's a name I haven't heard in a long <laughs> oh, time. <yeah. laughs> um, no, well, you figure, I mean, there's new data centers that are getting stood up and, and all that kind of stuff going on. So, yeah, I guess that kind of talking like sense. CCNAs or do you need, you know? They do. A lot are looking for CCNA. Yeah, absolutely. Some don't require the certification, but they are looking for that. Okay. Yeah, because that's, um, I haven't heard, honest to God, network engineers, I've, Two that's, three years, yeah. That's a t- yeah. That's a title I not haven't once from anyone. Time, yeah, we're definitely going through a wave right now where we're because everyone's built. Of... Everyone's making the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. they are. Yes, what they is are. the cloud? I don't know. But someone let's make else's some. computer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. Uh, how do people find out more about tech systems? Or I guess more importantly, like what haven't we touched on about tech systems? Well, yet? we do have an internal job board. So we have about ninety five offices across the country, as well as some internationally. Gotcha. So we have an internal job board. It's called Thingamajob. So thing nice. uh, my job, literally. Um, <laughs> so any job that's through tech systems across the country and nationwide or internationally would be listed on this website. Wasn't that a thing like 10, 12 years ago? Do they buy that? Remember, that do you, do you remember know. the thing on my job? That was actually, wasn't that a thing? Not to be, no pun intended. <laughs> I thought that was like a like a monster or something. Did, it I wonder if tech, might have been. I you totally could remember be that. Yeah. I'm not sure on that. The one. old dot com days, back when you were uh, still watching Teletubbies. Yeah. <laughs> no, no offense. <laughs> yep. So I guess that would answer why I'm not sure. Right. Well, and so, but I mean, I guess that's a good point. I mean, you know, Tech Systems does have offices all across the nation. Um, yes. Like, are you seeing? Because we're starting to get hit up more for people that are looking to come back here. Absolutely. You know, there there were people that were you know that left in 08, 09 when things were really really horrible and they went and found a job elsewhere. We're starting to get those requests for, you know, okay, who, how, how, like who and how, how do I start making my way back there? Who do I talk to? Obviously, I'm still in, you know, Texas or wherever. I can't come to your events. Who do I go to? Like, is that like, is that a transition you're starting to see? That is definitely a transition we're seeing. Yep. We're, I couldn't tell you, almost every single day I have somebody from outside of Michigan reaching out to me looking for a job within the Detroit market. Nice. Yeah, it's it's very high in demand. Just because of the growth, where the city is going, everyone's really looking to come back here. Well, so just out of curiosity, because, uh, I mean, it's it's a mixed bag when, mm-hmm. when I get them. I mean, is it primarily, like, folks that are looking to come here for the first time? Is it Or is it folks that are looking to kind of come back home? More so coming back home, I would say. There's a few people that I've talked to that have never lived in Michigan before and just excited about the opportunity. They that keep the reading is. the articles that you guys got cheap houses. I don't yeah. want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know. Yeah, yeah. Go to Birmingham and then call me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you've been doing this, you know, for a relatively short time. Mm-hmm. You, you're kind of drinking from the fire hose. Yes. You know, networking is, is daunting to say the least. And you're like, you know, we always hear like, I hate recruiters. I love recruiters. There's this complete, there's no medium recruiters. Very true. Um, I mean, how do you, I guess, managing it has to be daunting. I mean, what do you, between going to the events, getting your emails, posting stuff, I mean, it, it, how, how are you managing that? Because I, I would think it's just absolutely insane. It is absolutely insane. Yeah. Like you mentioned, I am very new to it, so I'm still kind of figuring out my operating rhythm. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Because then you don't come in with preconceived notions or, you know, you're not exactly. um, angry at the world and... Exactly. Yeah. It's all about your attitude. I mean, we're dealing with people. People are never consistent. So it's just about how you deal with it, your mindset. Um, you know, I'm very relationship driven and our company, Tech Systems itself, we are very relationship driven. Like you mentioned, you know, there's that fine line between recruiters either. It's a very good experience or very bad. There's so no way in between. No, there's not very much in between. That's absolutely I get, right. I get phone calls twice a week. It's <laughs> The guy's cool or the girl's cool or... The person's a complete idiot. Well, or Very the worst true. part is, is there is there is a company that literally I get a phone call or an email every eight weeks, 
like whenever someone it's like knew, me, <laughs> yeah, you know, whenever whenever that's some, how me and Dave met. I don't know if you knew that story. I didn't. Yeah, I tried to sell him crap like in '98, <laughs> and I called. He was on my ticker to call like every eight weeks or whatever, two yeah. three months, whatever. And then I'm finally like, let's, fin- go, let's go have a beer. Forget this crap talking on the phone. All right. And we're like. And, Let's and, be friends. It seems and, works and an empire was born. Yeah. Um, Look at that. No. So striking uh, back right now. Right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like every eight weeks, like I can just and I can tell because mm-hmm. it's always same company but different name. Like new person starts at company and they're like, hey, this guy had, like they go through all the inactive resumes and that kind of stuff because that's all. It's, it's always the same stupid blanket mm-hmm. email form email. It's the hey, haven't heard from you in a while. The yada yada, looking to update our resume database. But da 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 da, and I send the same same exact response every time, which is, hey, still not looking, totally comfy. Um, mm-hmm. Here's my the LinkedIn group that I run. It's got like 5,600 people in it. They might be looking. You should focus your efforts there and not on me. And they never join. Never. Like it's like literally there's like a 20 percent max of like I send out. I send that same note at least 10 to 12 times a week mm-hmm. and like maybe one or two join. I maybe. hear that every single day, many times a day. I hear that. That's why we really we're very, like I mentioned, we're very relationship driven. We don't just we're not just looking to place you in your Well, because you're a cold call at that point. Exactly. Yep. And that's not what we're looking to do. No, we're really we myself and tech systems were really focused on fostering professional development and making sure you're really happy in what you're doing. We spend a lot of our time at work. We need to make sure yeah. you like what you're doing when you're sitting there. So we really try to make sure we get to know what your guilt, your skills, goals, and interests are so that we're, con- we're placing you with the best opportunity to kind of avoid they could, that. They could put vision boards. In we could use could vision boards. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> that is a great idea. Okay, very cool. Yeah. All right. Texas and logo right in the middle of the vision board. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it now. Karma well, points, guys. Thanks. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Like, you know, you came to our networking events, and, and I'm not going to lie. I absolutely love our people. Like, even the people that come for the first time, I don't know if we're fostering like a normal – I mean, as far as what – you know, you go to every event in town, or you mm-hmm. try to at least – I mean, is there? I'm going to ask you advice. What what can we do better at our events? I mean, in terms of uh, you know engagement and things like that. Honestly, I think what you guys are doing are what the the average person is looking for. That <sighs> it's just a very casual event, just networking. Just We're shooting a, for average people. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just having a casual yeah. conversation on what is it that you're doing? What do you want to do in the future? That kind of conversation is really what people are looking for, and I think that's exactly what you're offering. Well, that was the whole point. I think when we started, it was we hated everything else. We didn't want to, you know, pay cover, and we hated like, you know, no sales pitch. No, yeah, no, no heavy pitches. That's why we, you know, we had a recruiter not too long ago that was just that was super heavy mm-hmm. in the in the in the pitch, and we're like, we had to take him aside and say, you you need to just relax. Yeah, and he, and you know, and he's been he hasn't missed an event in probably five years. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, and it's basically built a really nice career off of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when people build companies. Yeah, true. <laughs> I, I don't even think I've gotten up here. Mark Brown, if you're listening, uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not because you're probably full of hiring people. When, when you're lacking, then you'll start. Oh, he's already, he's already reached out about the pink slip. Oh, then he needs yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, Mark. Um, no, but that's got to be like you walk into our event and there's maybe, you know, the last casual, there's maybe a dozen recruiters and like, mm-hmm. and of course, everybody's like, I need a job. Then I'm like, go talk to him, her her, him, him, her, him, her. And then, like, you know, you get bombarded. Um, mm-hmm. Just managing that's got to be daunting because I know it's tough for me to manage it. A pocket full of business cards on, you know, Friday morning with a little bit, bit of a hangover because I drank too much. <laughs> <laughs> Going, oh, my God, who was these people? You know what I mean? So shoot off the LinkedIn request and you never mm-hmm. talk to them again. But, I mean, you can't go about it that way in your business. Yeah, we try to be more relationship-based, not so transactional. I try to get to know really what is it, not even just on a professional level, but personal level. What are your goals? That's what sets you apart from the next person. So that's really what I like to focus on and make sure that I'm helping you achieve. What do you like for lunch? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, what is your favorite sushi place? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joey. <No. laughs> All right, so where where do people find out about Tech Systems? Where can we go find where can we go find the jobs board? Where can we go learn more about Tech Systems and how do we find you? So like I mentioned, the website thing I'm a job, so okay. thing uh ma job dot com. We also have Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, we have a Twitter. So all the social media, we're on there. Um, myself, I you can reach me by email. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, it's a b i h n at techsystems.com. Or you can find, like I mentioned, LinkedIn. I'm also on 
Instagram and Facebook, all the fun social Alexis, media stuff. It's Alexis, it's A-S. It is, Alexis with the A, yep, and then Bin, B-I-H-N. I would Texas absolutely love to help you. Texas with T-E-K. Yes. Just in case you never heard of them. I, I don't yep. know anyone that hasn't, but I'm just... Tech I, Systems, so T-E-K Systems, all one word. And if you don't know how to spell systems... Then I find another industry. Am sorry right. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to spell rhythm still. So yeah, it's another day. That's an interesting word. Oh, I don't. Yeah, but, that's okay. But it is a dancer. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alexis. Thanks for hanging out. Thank Great you. conversations. Uh, I think we're bumping up against a break, uh, so we'll uh, hit a couple more tunes. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up. Segment four: of the free for all. All kinds of little fun topics we didn't get to. Uh, talk more with Natalia, and away we go. This is the It in the D show, and uh, we will be right back. It in the D networking Detroit, one beer at a time. It in the D dot com. This show is broadcasting live from Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming and as part of the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. Hello, everybody. It's Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to IT in the D. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. This is the Royal Rumble segment for episode 106, the IT in the D show, often imitated, never duplicated. We are hanging out in the Detroit Sound Studios above Activate Gaming in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. This is Bob, the sales guy, always here with Dave, the geek. Nuri, the FNG, is listening to us live in Delhi, India. Find us online, itnd.com, and give us a like on the Facebook and follow us on Twitter and all that other fun stuff. Don't forget, uh, September 17th, our pencil party, Majestic Rumble. Theater. Find, it, find that online or on the Meet tab. And EET. You don't um, have your headphones on. No, I don't. It's too late. You already missed it. <laughs> I, I played the Michael, whatever his name is. Let's get uh, <laughs> But like I said, find uh, find out details on the Pink Slip Party, itmedia.com slash meet. That's M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T. Yes, we're not selling bacon yet. We should. Um, that's coming up next. Um, <laughs> That'll be the next thing we do. Absolutely. So um, what the hell's left? Bob, I uh, speaking of your dreams, because the, it is all about Bob's dreams. Uh, so I, you, you, we've had this conversation where you want to get to the top of Mount Everest. Uh, for n- not because it's there, but because you want to poop on the top of that's Mount true. Everest. True story. Uh, that's that's the that's only true. reason, right? So when uh, about how else are you going to tell people <laughs> unless you take a selfie? And I could I could photo my shot, Photoshop myself <laughs> on the damn mountain, <laughs> like crap, put a flag in it, like, and it's going to be there forever because it's frozen. I'm immortalized. It's like building a pyramid around my tomb. <laughs> so about a year, year and a half See? ago, we started talking about Mars One. And you know there was the you know the the privatized uh, they're you know going to send people off into space. Uh, they you know they started off with like you know hundreds of thousands of uh, applicants and they were whittling it down to like the final thirty. And and your whole take on it because you know, this is Bob's eternal question. Whenever we talk about it, is okay. Well, where do you poop? It's okay. You know, so how like okay, you go you go to Mars. How does that work? And then so, but unfortunately, Bob. Very thoughtful. Yeah, he is. Uh, so, cause, like, logistics. We, we I mean, see, we I don't want to just go to Mars and not know logistics. We see the big elaborate cosplays at Comic Con, and Bob <laughs> and Bob stops them in the hallway and is like, "Seriously, how do you poop?" Like, well, don't they have those like pooping diapers? Wasn't there some they, psychopath like uh, better woman <laughs> that was in the aerospace program? Oh, the astronaut. Yeah, yeah, the astronaut. Yeah, she was like oh, she was here. The husband <laughs> and the, the, or the boyfriend that was married, and she and put and, yeah, on they, a, a, a so air, she could get there. Yeah, diaper. so she could get there faster. <laughs> and oh yeah, absolutely. So, but uh, like the ten foot guy dressed up as Groot, like. <laughs> what do you do? I'm, I am Groot. I know. <laughs> I like, must poop. I must Groot. <laughs> I must <laughs> Groot. <laughs> but so uh, the the uh, the people behind the I guess the president of Mars One, along with his chief technology guy. How are you president um, of Mars One? Oh no, because who he's, he's that? Got, who owned yeah. a Mars One? He does apparently. Oh, uh, and I own Mars Two. Got himself into a debate. <laughs> yeah, the Mars Second. Um, it's like got, the 502nd. Exactly. They got themselves into a debate with uh, some actual uh, really smart people. 
people from MIT uh, who, in the span of about 20 some odd minutes, um, filleted their entire idea, proved that basically everything that Mars One has been spouting off uh, relies upon technology that doesn't even exist yet. They have no idea what they're and they doing. They pre-orders. They oh yeah, they have no Do idea. Do you know the cost of the, these pre-orders uh, by no, chance? No clue. Um, but just think of all the time. Ignore dollars. Think about the time that these applicants who have, for the past year and a half, gone through all of these, you know, basically gave up their lives, you know, a la, you know, going on an episode, like going on a season of Survivor, uh, and they went through all these physical training exercises and all these mental exams and well, all this. Oh, they already went through all of that? Oh, Yeah. And and oh yeah, so originally, well, how, does that, how do they know the MIT guys are right? Uh, well, because well, they're they gotta talk to Virgin Mobile. They're the astro, <laughs> they're the astrophysics guys and the engineers from MIT. I'm pretty. Do they sure go to they Mars know. though? I'm pretty sure, but okay, but they don't have to go to Mars. They <laughs> they just had to prove that nothing that the Mars One people were saying would get them to Mars. <laughs> and more to the point, there was something like a. I think they proved out that even if they did get to Mars by some like miracle, there was like a ninety nine point whatever percent chance that everybody involved would be dead within three years. Didn't we just do a drive-by by Uranus? So that you can't stop at Mars? No. <laughs> and, and so that was, the, that was actually, honestly, the other thing. So it's, it was supposed they to be... They dead within three years yeah. after landing? Yeah. For and so that was, and that was the best part, is they actually proved it would have been... Che- like it's it's you know a cheaper for what reasons? Uh, oh, everything now from uh, oh yeah, everything from like engineering failure to you know okay, well, did you think about this? No, okay, well, that's going to kill people. Did you think about that? No, well, that's going to kill people. And the the best part is is they designed it so the Mars One concept is that it's a one way trip, and they actually proved it because that was the whole thing. You're that that's hence all of the physical, mental, and all these you know things that they went through. How do you get water and stuff? Eggs, those that like biodome. Those, those were some of the questions they couldn't answer. No, they did. They saw biodome. So how did Polly Shore do it? <laughs> Close the door. It would have been cheaper it's for them to do a two way. Yeah. So, and it would have actually been cheaper and more likely to succeed if they phrased the, if they framed this out as a two way trip, like go yeah. there and then come back. But no, that's it what was, I thought it was, was happening the whole time. Yeah, I, no, I guess so one, my brain wasn't wrapping. Yeah, no, one way trip. It was supposed. It was supposed to establish the first permanent human colony Whoa. on Mars. Wowza. That was that was the yeah. And so do we that, have a number of how many people signed up for this? Oh, it was hundreds of thousands that went really? through the application process. And by the time, I mean, they whittled it down to like the final. I think it's. I I want to say if I recall correctly, it was like thirty something um, that have been like living in their Mars One facility no. um, and going through all of these you know rigorous you know physical exercises and mental and evaluations. This is just called off now? So oh, no, like, well, no, they haven't officially called it off yet, but yeah, it's you would assume that's coming in the near future. Hmm. That's just outstanding. How have I, not I wasn't going it? anyway. No, you probably wouldn't have. I like it, I like it here just fine. I'd go to the moon, though. <laughs> just to prove that there isn't any damn footprints Poop up there. The moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob wants to go because he doesn't believe that people landed on the moon. Okay. He's one of those guys. I think it's funny to say that. I don't think I don't believe it. <laughs> like how angry people get. It's kind of like <laughs> wearing a Detroit Republican shirt in Detroit <laughs> and just watching how angry people get. It makes me laugh. Like the stupidest thing. Like you're getting mad at a T-shirt. So I'm totally wearing one. <laughs> I think I'm going to wear that for the next year until the election. <laughs> just to see like and going to like all the, like the stupid coffee houses in like Midtown. And just have people yell at me. You need a checklist of I'm every bar with Republican. a mustachioed hipster. Yeah. Oh, no. That was the one What coffee house that I go to when I met with the guys from the Fireside uh, chat, the app guys. And what's the Wi-Fi password? Eat the rich. I'm like, oh, this is a great. I love it. This is a great place. <laughs> <laughs> all my dreams come true. What are you guys, budding entrepreneurs? <laughs> we'll leave you <laughs> leaving now. <laughs> So you did. Uh, you, you mentioned something uh, earlier in the first segment that kind of ties into another story that I thought was a little odd. Um, apparently, there's been a little bit of a, of a counterfeiting ring going on here in the Metro Detroit area, and Is that hundred dollar bill crap. They're focusing on hundred dollar bills, oh. and it's happened twice in two different locations. And apparently, uh, counterfeiters really like milkshakes because in both cases they've uh, they've walked in. Uh, they've uh, you know ordered a milkshake and dropped a hundred dollar bill, which has later turned out to be counterfeit. Now, I'm not gonna lie. My first reaction to the story was, if you're paying for a milkshake with a hundred dollar bill, I'm going to immediately assume that you're a jerk. Because yeah. I mean that's just stupid. One hundred percent. No, if you say if you have a hundred dollar bill, you give him a debit card. I do it. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I only have like two hundred dollar bills. Here's a here's my card. 
Like Ooh. I'm, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I, I only have, Fancy. Four, I only have Fancy. 1400s, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Just got paid. Yeah, I hate when that happens to me. All those hundreds when yeah. I have my milkshakes. Yeah. I was sipping on 100, 100, 100. I'm so sorry. 100, 100. Oh, forgive me, 100. Thought 100. I had a 10 in here somewhere. <laughs> but no, so apparently there there is a little counterfeiting ring going on around wow. the area, which, you know, mm. and, and, I, and it wasn't it uh, Bucharest? That said that they're not accepting hundred dollar bills anymore. Really? Wasn't it? Weren't you the one that posted that image? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Don't they have that marker you can put on or something. I don't know. There's the yeah. Marker. That was how they found out because they showed the two pictures. The guy threw the marker down and like the one didn't. I don't know how it works. Uh, but um, yeah, I no don't plan on counterfeiting anytime soon. Yeah, but I, I just I I do I find it odd that you know like and there was a whole raging debate you know when the, the, when the picture you know got out there about you know Bucharest isn't taking hundred dollar bills and well it's a valid form of currency and they have to accept it and yada 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 well no, no they really don't yeah. I mean it's here's it's, a bag of pennies buttholes right see how that works out for you they right. don't really have to accept any currency that they want to um, yeah I just like I don't get it like because if it, that's like counterfeiting to create really good counterfeits like that's one of those crimes where I sit back and I look and I'm just like you know if you would just take like a tenth of the time, effort, and energy that you're spending trying to like screw the system and do like channel that into something good, like channel that into actually like, creating something, right? Don't be a criminal and yeah. and like just then like the like we'd be better. Like it's yeah. it's because it's for certain it's dumb. I mean, it's you know because it, it, it that's you know not many sales reps I worked with Dave that work so hard at writing fake deals and cheating the system. I mean, if you just really called on like a half a dozen customers, you might actually have sold something. Yeah. You know, powers for good. Oh, we we talked about that. All you know, the back time. in the day, there was you know, yeah, you were dumb enough to pay on booking, not on installation. Well, yeah, that's hey, fake I sold deals. S- yeah, I sold seventeen DS threes for one hundred seventy five grand a month, and I'm going to Hawaii. Oops, they didn't install. Uh oh, I'm going to go work for Sprint now. You know, <laughs> ser- look, seriously, like how stupid of a company you have to be. You know, can I talk about something real quick? It's bugging, oh, it's bugging the living hell out of me. Um, so. For those that don't know, I'm a a 42-year-old man. I have gray hair, and I'm losing my hair, and I don't care, and I got a belly, and I seriously... You're you're getting dangerously close to Dr. Seussing this. So it's gray hair, don't care. Don't care. It's not there. I went to Cedar Point, and uh, my my family, everyone except for the baby and me, went on a ride. And I was sitting there, and she sees the stuffed animal bin and starts wailing. So what does a good dad do? I'm going to win you a stuffed animal, honey. So what are the three guesses? Weight, you know, height, and or no, I'm sorry, weight, age, and, and birthday month. Right. So I go, you know, there's no way I'm getting on that scale. I don't feel like embarrassing myself in front of these people. Um, age, guess my damn age. She'll probably be like 36, and then I'll go, ha, 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 I'm 42. No, <laughs> no. She sees me with the baby, looks at me, looks at the baby, looks at me, 52 oh. years old. Mm. And I'm like... Part of me was like, yeah. Son of a- and at first, I'm like, I don't want this stupid animal. Get me the hell out of here. But then, no. But then, it, then it, the light bell went off. I go, there's all these, there's all these hillbillies at Cedar Point. And she looked at me, and she looked at the baby, saw the gray hair, and she's like, Grandpa, Dad, Grandpa, Dad. And there's so many damn. You know, hillbilly right. year olds point. that have a child, pretty much. Absolutely. So here I go. I had the whole family with me the next time. Tried it again on the other side of the park. She gets forty two on the nose. So so then I'm like, yep. I go next time you you idiots are leaving me with just a baby, and I'm going to win all the things. I'm gonna clean the house. Oh, and- totally. But I'm like fifty two. I'm like of all the things I got to hear at the dip. And here's the thing, Cedar Point. Got stupid expensive. Did I'm not gonna lie. You were talking about that, and like I, I mean, it's like worse than Disney. Disney. So family of four, we had lunch at Disney. Chicken sandwich, fries, and a chicken sandwich, fries, and a coke was like for four of us, like thirty eight bucks. Right. Fine. Here, four lousy burgers, fries, four waters, sixty five dollars. I got two corn dogs and two waters was a twenty dollar bill. Two corn dogs and two waters. Oh, that that should be four dollars. Uh, thank you. At least like <laughs> three, four bucks for the corn, or, or maybe six bucks. No, it should have been ten. Like everything was literally like Charles. Um, they went to lunch at TGI Fridays, 
for two adults and an eight year old boy? Um, one hundred and forty seven dollars. One ten. Wow. Kill me now. Oh, it was in, like. Then you want fast pass to go to line quicker? Uh, eighty bucks a head. So, so they what dropped do we them. Do? What do we do to combat this insanity? Open up another roller coaster park? I don't know. Um, but it got, that's insane. It got stupid expensive, and it wasn't that bad two years ago. It didn't ago. used to be that. No, it didn't used to be that. They, uh, they're nickel and diming. Like it was bad. Then they have Plinko at every ride for like ten dollars, and you can win a fast pass for one ride. And like, there's lineups of people yeah, trying to get on this thing. Yeah, scam artisty everywhere. Oh, yeah. it was. It's That's nuts. Too bad. There's no shows anymore, which is fine. You go to Cedar Point for the rides, right? You don't go for the stupid shows. Right. Oh boy, was it! It was. It was nothing like I remembered. It, you're not. You're not convincing me that I want to go there anytime soon. You kind of have to. It's like the. It's a two hour drive, and it's like the the best roller coaster park in the globe. And it's like you're stuck. You gotta, you're yeah, stuck. And they know you're just stuck. Take, you just get a second job. No big deal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Right. I'll sell some stock. Let's go to Cedar Point. <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> no, but you stay on the park. And the Breakers is the coolest place. It's right on the water. Right. Phenomenal joint. Well, they get you in early. Yeah, it gets you an hour. That's the whole point is get an hour early. But here's, you know, the, the lines are ridiculous. Not like Universal Ridiculous. But it was bad. But Midwest ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but it's like you gotta go. Like, and then, Daddy, I want this. Daddy, every, like every corner you turn, there's like twenty dollar bill. Like, I treated it like like treat it like Vegas. Just just pay. <laughs> <laughs> What's my bill? Sixteen hundred. Just here's my debit card. <laughs> you know, like literally, that's the way. It, that's how bad it got. I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even opening my statement this month. Like. <laughs> I swear to God, my kids have fun. Yeah, I don't know, I'll worry about Mem- it. Later. Memories, not yeah. things. That's, that's I what I still have that Netflix myself, yeah. stock. Like a Christ, <laughs> like, I'm gonna trade on Monday to pay for this. But anyway, what the hell else is going on? Not a whole hell of a lot. I mean, and, and we are actually coming up against the end of the episode. So I mean, I, I want to make talk sure. about these nuts, like the presidential candidate. Yeah. Please? Okay. Yeah, we should. Because I think I'm going to vote for him. I think a lot of people are planning on voting for him. You, we um. This is another thing, and I wrote so I wrote a, I wrote a pre blog. I, I, really, yeah. I don't know if Dave's ever going to release it or not, but I'm, but I'm, I wrote a "Don't Be That Guy" called "Political Pundit" on social media. And God, I hate people. Here's my thing, and, and Natalia, you can chime in if, if if you think I'm I'm off base. Like I'll, I used Keith Olbermann as an example, and he used to be on ESPN, and then he went on e- ESPN or I'm sorry MSNBC and became a political pundit, and tried to get back onto ESPN. But it didn't work because he alienated half of the audience because he was such a. Oh. It didn't matter if he was left or right. Yeah, half the people th- hate just him. Closing and it's where just you a, stand. yeah, it's just amazing now how like I joked about the Detroit Republican shirt, but how many people will just loathe me because I have a different be, instantly without conversation because of a, of a slight difference of opinion. It's not even yeah. a big one, and, you know. And I swear most people are moderates. And, everyone, and, and, yeah. And most people are, are well, I mean, I, I, let me retract that statement. A lot of people are a lot more fiscally conservative, but, you know, just socially liberal. Right. Mm-hmm. And there just isn't a party that represents well, the majority of, like, the bell curve. And, and we all sit here sh- shaking our fists at the sky and, and don't know Well, it's the Chris Rock it. motif. You know, there are some things I'm really, you know, drugs and prostitution, extremely liberal. Crime and punishment. Pretty conservative, <laughs> and like, and, and I think everybody has that. Like, I, I have yet to meet a person in my life, even the ones that have said I just vote straight ticket, that really believe straight ticket. Oh God, like, no. that, that really, yeah, no. uh, that really understand. I mean, but if it, you look at read a free press comment section on Facebook, oh, it's atrocious. It, the vitriol and the hate, it's insane. Like, do you really think like that? Well, that's why Lewis Black uh, posted something on Facebook, and he's like, "Look, guys, I love y'all, uh, but I'm moving to Canada because I it's starting already, and I cannot stand like the next year and a half of this election cycle. Yeah, that's awful. I want nothing to do with it. I just want the to go away. The two party system just needs to. Just, yeah, I, I don't know how either that I... or it becomes Thunderdome. Like if it becomes Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leave. I'd pay to and watch that's our that. president. I'd yeah. then I'm yeah. down. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I say write a letter to Congress. Duke it out. Duke it out. But like, I've never like if you 
you don't think like I we, we were talking to a guy it was from Connecticut. I go, oh, voting straight Republican this year, and he just laughed at me. And I said, you know, it's, and he go, and he, you know, I go, yeah, pretty, you know, I don't know, I, I've I've evolved over the years, right? And I I was I voted for Perot, I voted for Clinton, I was went hard Republican. Now I'm right about in the middle. I got my friend over here to the to, to the right. He couldn't be more left if he tried. Yeah. But it's not like I hate him for it. Like I, that would be it's insane to me to think. That you're going to physically hate someone. Well, and I'm not going to lie. Let, let's be honest. The the worst uh, or, or or best, depending on your point of view, part about being a social media pundit on Facebook is having friends like Bob. Uh, because we do. We, we have a couple friends that are uh, the kings uh, of um, I get all my information from memes. Uh, oh. and, and so like, it's, it's the, hey, you know, post this out with – no fact checking or really grasping what's good that it and you know along comes Bob. Did, 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 you know, no, not true, not true, not true. Here's why, here's why, here's why. Fact source, fact source, fact source. And and then just watching the pile on like I I do. I'm not gonna lie, I don't dive in anymore because it just it's not worth the migraines yeah. I get. But watching the piling on that happens when he's like he does. He tries to be very perfectly logical and Rational factual about and things. Logical, how I dare math. you? That's his, I his math. American politics. Right. I like right. mathing. I have no issues with mathing. <laughs> mathing. <laughs> Someone like, fire the CEO of Walmart and give the money to, to the workers. Okay, oh. that's three dollars per worker per year. Next, works out to <laughs> one cent an hour raise. <laughs> give it to them. Like, so today, someone said we should give everyone. Ba- Have you ever heard of the concept of basic income? Yes, I got to get the hell off of Reddit. Yeah, it's, it's melting in my brain. Well, what's the, what's what to explain to me what it is? Well, we should get rid of welfare and food stamps. Okay, but and give everyone twenty five hundred dollars a month. I'm right. Like, okay. So you got 300 million people. Let's do some math. And I go worked out to like higher, like 19 trillion a year, and our GDP is like 16 trillion. Right. I go, yeah. Let's get let's get right on that. Let's sign sign me up, man. <laughs> like what? <laughs> They're like, well, we should do it, man. I'm like, math. Like <laughs> I'm tired of talking to people. Like that's the problem. It's like I keep mathing like on everything. <laughs> like it drives me bonkers, and I gotta stop it. And I get it though. Like I want to help poor people. I do, I do too, man. Like I, I want to donate more to gleaners. I don't do enough, but I know math. Like if I'm going to miss my house payment because I'm don't too, donating too much to gleaners, I got to pull back. Probably a little not going to cut. Yeah, right. probably going to cut back a little like, bit. <laughs> just this whole. Pl- but like I have friends that like think they're going to. St- the problem. The problem I have, and that was kind of my whole thing with this blog was, people think they're swaying public opinion by these memes. And these statements, and it's so like it. It, tr- it doesn't work You've that way. You've never changed a single opinion. No, ever. based on a bumper sticker, just like yeah, um, or a Facebook or post. A meme. <laughs> yeah, no, or like you know, God love I love Kevin, but his inspirational quote of the morning. It's like, <laughs> God, Kevin, like I'm not getting up today. Like I don't feel like working. Hey, there's a great. Meme. It's a beautiful sunny background with some white fluffy clouds that. Says, get up and go for the day. I'm gonna sell something today. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. You know, it's just like that stuff. You know, you know what? Just uh, the best compliment I ever get in life is um, Mike Z came up to me at, at the wrestling event. He goes, "You know what I like? Your Facebook is just like nice." And I just go, "You realize that's like the complete happy edited version of my life, right? It's not like <laughs> that's not every day." But I go, "But that's what I want to share. I don't want to like murder, murder, do mad, yeah, you know, or woe is me, or you, nobody likes me, everybody don't go me, to everybody don't works. go to Punchbowl Social because <laughs> <laughs> stupid. Oh God, it's just the more I, I'd lo- I'd love to be able to. Un- we're not in a position to unplug, but God, would it be amazing?" It would be absolutely amazing just to not anything. You know, I actually I did. I, I thought about it. I think the last time I truly unplugged um, was our honeymoon when, I, when Anita and I got married. Um, so we're coming up on 11 years ago where I did. We went to Hawaii for two weeks. I never checked email, didn't answer my – I literally think like that's the longest stretch that I can I – mean, maybe a day or two here or there. Um but yeah, no, it's been a long time. Email me. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, why do I gotta check 
Meh. Like just email me. If you want to send me a picture of your kids on vacation, email me. I, I'll say, oh, my God, it looks amazing. Like, I'll make you feel good. No, that's because right. that's what Facebook turned into. It's lazy. Like you used to look. Send, I'm like, raising my children. No, look. You, know, you send the group email to everybody, all your friends, going, "Hey, here's my family. I lost ten pounds. <laughs> fitness, I feel great. I hate you. <laughs> um, for crying out loud, it's going to hell. Are we done yet? We are. So, like I said, I just want to make sure that uh, we, you know, just uh, reminded everybody. So we do. We have the Pink Slip Party coming up on Thursday, September seventeenth. Uh, that'll be over at the Majestic. Other than that, uh, find us out at it and the uh, We are at facebook.com slash it and the d. You can find us on the Twitters at at it and the d. And of course, we are in the Podcast Detroit Studios uh, that we launched a few weeks ago. You can find out all the fun and exciting network. Stuff. I caught you on a mistake. Finally, what? We're not in the Podcast Detroit Network. Whatever. City Detroit uh, Sound Studios. Whatever. So it's uh, <laughs> we're at podcastdetroit.com. Always piles on when You'd I find it at uh, right. facebook.com slash podcastdetroit and, of course, at podcastdetroit on Twitter. Uh, we got a whole bunch of new shows uh, that are out live. We had uh, the Rack Show guys uh, that were in here yesterday. We met them at Midwest Comic or Midwest Media Expo. Uh, had a great time with them. Uh, and their, their shows are just fun. I, I had a great time sitting in with them yesterday. We had Gridiron here, in here today from the Detroit Lions. That oh, yeah. We didn't talk about down that. the field. Yeah. Song he's going to do a which, show, which may or may not be leading to something down the road. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Natalia here might be doing her own show. The yeah, I'm rumor. excited about it. Oh, so it's the early, you're you're past the point of no return now. Oh yeah, I'm pretty committed to it. I just have to get a little organized. Oh, it's live. Yeah, it's already recorded and live, so you can't go back now. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, this was us uh, for, uh, what are we in, August 24th, episode 106, dude. 107 is going to be Bobless. I'm oh, that's be right. In, you're going to be in Vegas. And that's that'll be the first read for FanDuel, which will be awesome. <laughs> the only football guy who's not here. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, one. I'll bring. Well, I'll, I'll invite Gridiron in for that one. No, he we'll said he'd come in for it. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this week. Uh, again, thank you to our guests Natalia and Alexis for hanging out. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks over at the Majestic, and keep reading, keep listening, keep doing what you do. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. You don't gotta go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. See you next week. Beat it. The emergency destruction system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear a lamentation of the women. Long live, Flash! You've saved your life. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so. Well, especially with the back doors open. Go. Hold up. Time out. Time out. Y'all take a chill. You need to cool that shit out. And that's the double truth, Ruth. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. That's why I like it in the can. Joe on the cheese. Ohms. 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 Spare me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy! Shut up, Mimsy! Shut up, Mimsy! Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, I can't take that position. That analogy sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your 8-track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? <laughs> Yeah, so now I'm just, like, doing, like, stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> go home. <laughs> unplug. <laughs> get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. <laughs> I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> show now. I love this city. I was banging oh, on the way. Wrong.
Really? Should we talk about this? We'll Tag team. Should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show.